Hey everyone, it's Jason, and these are my top three cruise news stories of the week. And the last story actually shocked me because this is on a lot of cruisers' minds right now, and many of them are worried about it. So cruise story number one, and this week marks the height of hurricane season. And like clockwork, we have a major hurricane out in the Atlantic disrupting cruises. So we have so far eight itinerary changes that we know of, and most of them are moving from the Eastern to the Western Caribbean. What I'm gonna say is, is you just have to use flexibility at this time of year. Two weeks ago, we were on the Celebrity Equinox, and after Sail Away, we found out there was gonna be an itinerary change. And look at these seas right here. This is what we had. They were amazing flat calm seas. We didn't have to worry the whole week. And so they make these changes to make sure passengers are safe and have an enjoyable cruise. You would rather miss that, can't miss port, and just have it, just have to go on another cruise to enjoy it than have to travel through some of these nasty seas. So once again, just use some flexibility, be understanding, especially at this time of year, because this is when you see a lot of itinerary changes. So cruise story number two, and this is a couple announcements from Disney at D23, was one, the naming of the new cruise ship, and that is the global dream that was supposed to be. They purchased this, they're repurposing it to a Disney ship. We will never see this probably in the United States. This is going to be a year-round Asian sailings, and the name is going to be the Disney Adventure. So Disney also announced the name of their new private destination in the Bahamas, Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point. Now the first sailing to that will be in June of next year. Also something very interesting is it's said that they have spent $400 million on this private destination. Just to give you a comparison, and I know this is like $2018, so we have obviously had inflation, but Royal spent $250 million on Perfect Day at Coco Cay. So it'll be really interesting to see what kind of changes or what they've done to that island. So one quick question. We have never been on Disney. We don't have kids. So anybody out there that doesn't have kids that loves sailing Disney would love hearing from you. What is your th thoughts about going on Disney with no kids? So before I get to number three, if you wouldn't mind, please giving this video a like. It does help the channel grow. Also consider subscribing as I do daily cruise news shorts and daily cruise tips and tricks, and they're both under 30 seconds. I also do longer videos on Saturday and Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. Thanks so much. So cruise story number three, and this is something that took me a little off guard because it is on a lot of people's minds right now, especially those that have a cruise booked maybe this fall or winter, and this is about mask mandates and protocols. I was not expecting this to be such a big deal, and I, I saw it on Cruise Critic on the roll calls for our next cruise, multiple messages talking about, are we gonna have to wear masks? I'm gonna get my next vaccination. So I thought that was very interesting. And John Heald's comments, I wanna read them to you. He said, some of you written, are you going back to mask wearing? Are you going back to protocols? And he said, we are not. So I thought that was really interesting. It is a hot topic for debate right now. If you do have a cruise booked in the next few months, is this something that is a concern to you? I would appreciate it if you keep those comments civil. Uh, understand everyone has their own opinion on this and let's be civil in those comments. I do appreciate you guys watching. I look forward to the feedback and the comments and until I talk to you next week, happy cruising.